Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and welcome to Tech Discussion Bytes. This is the new video series that I'm going to be launching to discuss tech news, tech apps, technology, video game, you know, all that stuff. Now, for those of you who wonder what the new format change is, you can watch my first video on the Daily Ride Share where I explain what the new format is going to entail. However, I am going to explain in this one that you can watch that video, but take away the fact that on this particular video, we're gonna be talking about one topic, and that's because I have an awful lot to say about it, I believe. So yeah, heads up, this is probably gonna be a long video. And in fact, um, you can see the time and yeah. So this one's gonna be a long one and I don't anticipate it to be edited much. And I need to stop rambling because, yeah, you guys don't like it when I ramble. So that's just a heads up for this one, though. This is going to be a long one. And the reason it's going to be long is because it's a subject I am very, very passionate about. And it is something that is of growing concern to me. You know how some people are concerned about global warming. Some people are concerned about capitalism. Some people are concerned about Donald Trump. I... Not that I'm going to poo poo on those. I'm actually concerned about all of those to a certain extent, but I am especially concerned about smartphone use. And I am also concerned about this instant gratification need that this generation is growing up with. Now, I don't want to sound like an old man, especially since I just barely cracked 30, but I don't know. I remember growing up that I was raised that you had to wait for things. You would see a preview on a VHS tape and you would for like the Lion King and you'd have to wait five months for it to come out. Then when it came out, you'd have to wait eight months for it to come to home video. I remember pre-ordering the NSYNC album, No Strings Attached, and having to wait two months. And I remember having to wait for the store to actually open. And I think instant gratification has become like a major, major problem for a lot of kids. It doesn't teach them discipline. It doesn't teach them that waiting is good. And in fact, everything is at the click of the button and smartphones definitely contribute to that. But what smartphones also do is they contribute to a constant need for connection, so to speak. And I have witnessed this so much in my life where even with, you know, family members, there has been some serious problems with cell phone addiction. Um, and I don't want to name names because they might be watching this video and they'll know who they are. But I cannot tell you how frustrating it is to have grown up, well, not grown up really, but you know, there were times when at least one of these members was so into their phone, so couldn't pay attention to things that I remember actually taking the phone out of their hand and demanding they not be on it for just an hour, just an hour, like put the phone away for an hour. And thankfully that person kind of came around and started realizing um, the problem is because of things like that, that I actually resisted getting a smartphone for a long time. Movie pass finally made me want to do it. And I have to admit I have used it more often and I've had to actually restrict myself on using it because it's very addictive, and I don't think adults are handling it very well. Teenagers certainly aren't handling it well. And what bothers me most is when I am in line and I see a bunch of kids and they all have smartphones. It's not even just that they're $800 iPhones that, you know what, it's fun. It's strange to see a family paying with food stamps for food, but all their kids have $800 iPhones like that. That's not even like the worst of it. It's the fact that the kids are on the phones. They're not paying attention to their surroundings and really they need to be occupied by the phones. They just need to be occupied and they are missing life. They are missing life and they're not interacting with each other. And it's, it's sad. And, um, you, yeah, but you know who else agrees with me? And I was actually very shocked to this. And this is why this story caught my eye. And that's why all the other stories I was going to talk about in this episode, I've put to the side because I want to focus on this one. Apple investors actually agree with me. And according to this article on cast.net, um, whoa, sorry. Sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> which I'm sorry to say this website is not mobile friendly, as you can clearly see. 
Two major Apple investors have urged the iPhone maker to take action to curb growing smartphone addiction among children, highlighting growth concern about the effects of gadgets and social media on youngsters. New York-based Jana Partners LLC and the California State Teachers Retirement System, or CalStress, I hope I said that right, said on Monday in an open letter to Apple that the company must offer more choices and tools to help children fight addiction to its devices. Quote, there is a developing conscious around the world, including Silicon Valley, that the potential long-term consequences of new technologies need to be factored in at the outset, and no company can outsource that responsibility. Apple can play a defining role in signaling to the industry that paying special attention to the health and development of the next generation is both good business and the right thing to do. Um, the two investors collectively control $2 billion worth of Apple shares. Now, I don't know if that's enough to actually make a dent or make a difference, but I mean, it's not nothing. Um, among their proposals that Apple establish an expert committee, including child development specialists, offer Apple's vast information to researchers and enhance mobile device software so that parents have more options to protect their children's health. Although I'm going to pause here for a second because here's the thing. I think the way the parents can honestly protect their kids' health is to not let them have the phone. To not even let them have the phone. That is protecting their health. That is encouraging them to go outside or to go speak to friends. That's all it is. Um, the letter cited various studies and surveys on how the heavy usage of smartphones and social media negatively affects children's mental and physical health. Examples include distractions by digital technologies in the classroom, a decreased ability of students to focus on educational tasks, and higher risks of suicide and depression. And actually, 2020 has done several specials on that topic. In fact, if I can find it, I will link to it below. I think you can watch it on Hulu. It was a very interesting special. Um, the investor's call reflects growing concerns around the world about the long-term impact um will be of using mobile devices and social media, especially for those who start to use smartphones at an early age. While tech companies have not acknowledged openly that their gadgets may be addictive, some Silicon Valley insiders have begun to speak to media about how gadgets, mobile applications, and social media sites are designed to be addictive and to keep users' attentions as long as possible. Now, the thing about this article that is especially interesting that should be noted is that, yeah, they, they're actually absolutely right. Um, now, again, I think the best thing parents can do, honestly and sincerely, don't hand your kids a smartphone. Don't hand them a tablet. You know, they just don't need it. Me and Katie have already talked, and we have decided that when we have kids, they are not going to have smartphones. They will not have tablets. They will not even have, like, a kid cab tablet, like a, what is it, a Kobo I don't know, it's that Toys R Us tablet thing. They're not going to have them. Don't need them. And it's really interesting because uh, after reading this article, I kind of had to do a little bit of soul searching because I kind of feel like a little bit of a hypocrite having that stance, to, to be perfectly honest, because I love video games. I do love video games. And, you know, for years, my parents would not let me own a video game console. They, they just wouldn't. Um, I got my first video game console when I was eight and they didn't let me have it because they felt it would stunt my social growth and everything. And I actually come from the perspective that video games in moderation can actually be very helpful. On the other, I think they help develop learning. I think they can develop mind skills. Of course, I grew up playing games like the Neverhood and, um, you know, those are games that required some more critical thinking than some of today's games like the Call of Duties don't always require <laughs> a lot from the player, to be perfectly honest. So I kind of wonder, because now I'm kind of in the position of my parents. My parents didn't want me to have video games when I was really young, and I don't want my kids to have smartphones when they're really young. Interestingly, though, years have gone by, and a couple things I think have been proven, at least to me, and this is through experience. Through experience... Um, I know friends and my cousin who, um, like cousins and stuff like that, who played video games at a very, very young age. Like, we're talking four or five their whole lives. And they are not socially awkward. In fact, they are probably more social than most people. I think video games, especially Pokemon, really helped me socialize. So that's one thing I learned. 
Another thing I learned, and this is something that my dad had a huge concern about, my dad really hated me playing violent video games. I think it's because he saw all the media stories and he was really afraid that playing a lot of violent video games would result in me being violent. Well, years later, I'm still playing some pretty violent video games, watching some violent movies too, to be honest, and I am not a violent person, and I have never struck someone, and I've never attacked someone, I've never shot someone, I've never done any of that. So, so I think that, and my dad doesn't complain about the violent video games as much anymore, because I think over time he realized that he really was worried about nothing. But you know what, that's fine. It's a parent's job to worry, and I don't begrudge parents for worrying. So why do I have this stance on the smartphones then, and the social media? It's not just because of the media, let me tell you that. It's not just because of the media. It's because it, I go to church, and I see parents, when they need their kids to be quiet, they hand them, like, a smartphone. Like, they take the smartphone, they just hand it to them. And the kids are just mesmerized on the screen. They're just looking at the screen they're mesmerized, and they're just touching it. This and this, and they kind of become transfixed. Well, you know, okay, that's one thing. I mean, for a five-year-old to sit through the adult service at church, I'm going to admit that's kind of boring. But I go to those same, those same parents' house sometimes. I go to dinner. And I'm not naming names, and I'm not calling anyone out, because I don't think this is anyone's, any particular person's problem. So I don't want to embarrass anyone, but, but I see their kids at, at home sometimes and I see them on the gadgets like they are still enwrapped with the phone and the tablet and they're usually just tapping it, playing a game or watching Netflix. They're not interacting with anyone. They're not playing with kids. And it concerns me because when I see certain couples and their kids, the kid's always on a device. Well, that's a red flag to me. And I'm sorry to say there are still family members I know who use their phone so much, so much, and they cannot bear to put it away. They cannot bear, in fact, even... They even get mad if you tell them to put it away. And it's in, it's annoying because they're on it all the time. Whether they're at dinner, whether they're watching TV. So, and it's interesting because video games had like a very similar concern when the Game Boy came out. Oh, you can take your video games with you, so now you're not going to pay attention. And once in a while, I saw that. But you know what? Video games when I was growing up, yeah, some kids did get addicted, and that's still a problem, but it didn't become an epidemic the way people thought it would. It flirted with the idea briefly when World of Warcraft came out, but it never became the epidemic. Smartphones have become an epidemic. I don't know a single person who doesn't own a smartphone. Heck, I know... Now, I don't know personally, but I have seen homeless people. They own smartphones. And they got to have a data plan also with that. So, you know, it's interesting. They're homeless and they, they, still, they still have a smartphone. And you see these problems with adults. And you see them with teenagers. So, of course, it's going to affect kids. And it's really interesting that a couple of Apple investors have recognized this. But you know who recognized it first? Steve Jobs. Yeah. Steve Jobs, the guy who invented the iPhone, who invented the iPad, he wouldn't let his kids have them. He'd let them have an iPod because it's just music, and I don't think he cared too much, but when it came to, like, smart devices, he actually knew the dangers more than anyone. He didn't... He didn't care about the dangers enough to not sell you the product, but he knew about them enough that he wouldn't let his own kids have them. So I think that speaks volumes about 
you know, the company being very aware that these are little addiction machines. And, I mean, I do get concerned about the the world. And, I'm, you know, and I know that to a certain extent they're necessary. And, in fact, if you're going to do ride sharing or food delivery, they're especially necessary now. But it's a problem. It's a problem. I... I am definitely very concerned about where it's heading with the kids, and I'm personally glad that there are Apple investors who recognize the danger and say, hey, we have got to get ahead of this. And in fact, they aren't even the only ones, right? These days, Facebook is coming under fire for very similar claims because people get addicted to Facebook. And I actually think, and they find that people on Facebook are more depressed, and they're more suicidal, and they're less happy. And in fact, I even detox from Facebook once in a while. I, especially when there's like an election or something, I will actually put my account on hold and I will go black, as they say. And, you know, it's just, yeah, we need to, we need to take a break from it once in a while. And I think that's the danger that we're not taking any breaks and we're showing our kids that it's okay to use these things. So I know when I have kids, I am not only going to not let them have their own smartphones, I am going to definitely be limiting my cell phone use because I want to set a good example to them. And hopefully by the time those kids come around, it'll be a more acknowledged problem and maybe um, institutions that can be a little bit more forceful about this. Because here's how I think we got to this problem. And I know this video has been going on for a while, but I'm, I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. I'm sorry. I warned you to be long. The... The reason we're in this mess is because the world got into this inability to say no. People tell me, hey, you say you're not going to allow your kids to have smartphones and stuff now. You have kids. They're noisy. What are you going to do? I'm going to hand them a damn coloring book. That's what I'm going to do. And if, they, and, if, and if they don't keep, and if they decide to keep being noisy and they decide to be disruptive, we'll take them home. And if they get really disruptive, we'll give them a spanking and send them to bed without supper. You know, we'll, we'll do what we have to. We'll parent. You see, my parents raised me with the very real understanding that while they loved us unconditionally, they were not here to be our friends. They were here to be our parents. And they said no on many things. And so we're, I'm going to have to say no. And I hope that'll help. I know everyone else is doing it. Hey, I don't care if everyone else is doing it. Have you ever heard the phrase, if everyone was jumping off a cliff, would you do it too? There's a lot of truth to that saying. What if the schools had like a zero tolerance, no phone policy? I think it's a, I think it's a right for the schools to say that the kids are here to learn, not to chat. It's like, well, what if the parents need to get a hold of the kids? Well, parents were getting a hold of the kids long before cell phones. Don't even use that excuse. It's not a good one. Our inability to say no got us into this mess, and we need to get ourselves out of it. I'm going to start with me. I don't know about you, but this this is something to think about. This is definitely something to think about. So, And that's where we're finally going to end this. So what do you folks think? Do you agree, disagree? Heck, have you had any problems with cell phone addiction in your family? If so, you know, let's talk about it. I mean, I... I mean, I'm not here to judge. I, I, again, I understand the appeal. Ever since I got my smartphone, I noticed even I started to use it a little bit more, and I kind of had to, you know, reel that in a little bit because it was getting out of hand. So, you know, let's talk about it and let's help each other out. And the rest, you know, the drill: like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy the videos I make, consider becoming a Patreon Patreon member <laughs> for one dollar a month. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.